Most rappers dedicate their whole lives chasing a viral hit that will transform their and their family's lives. However, the irony lies in the fact that for some artists, achieving that one moment of unparalleled success can be a double-edged sword, leading to their downfall. In the unpredictable world of the music industry, the term one-hit wonder captures the paradoxical nature of fame, where the peak of success can actually be the beginning of the end. And as we look into these artists' stories, we see that going to the top can be exciting, but the aftermath is just as interesting, with many of these artists perfectly displaying the fragility of stardom in the modern day. So here are one-hit wonders that disappeared. And where are they now? Lil Xan would burst into the SoundCloud scene with his hit Betrayed, which landed at number 44 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was once one of the most viewed videos on Cole Bennett's Lyrical Lemonade YouTube channel. With his edgy, drug-heavy, reckless personality, he would be one of the most anticipated artists in this new wave of emo rappers in 2017, alongside the likes of Lil Peep, Lil Uzi Vert and Juice World. However, Lil Xan would never reach the stardom those rappers did. He had a very short time in the spotlight and it was all down to his own terrible choices. Now Lil Xan's failure would date back all the way to high school where he failed every single class until he eventually dropped out during his freshman year, with this clearly showing his poor work ethic. Now a lot of rappers do actually fail in school, simply as they do not care about what they are learning about I do not see education as necessary in their future, which is fine, especially as once they're finished with school a lot of these rappers start grinding and putting in loads of work into their music career, recording and working every day. But this wasn't the case of Lil Xan. When Lil Xan was tasked with expanding past his hit betrayal to connect with new artists and record his debut album, he simply couldn't. When his manager was setting up meetings for Lil Xan to connect with artists and promoters in the industry, he simply wouldn't turn up to these meetings. This would continue when he had to record new music for his album, where again, he simply wouldn't record music and would instead go to parties, invite girls over and do drugs. Like I remember when Lil Xan's album came out, right? And I remember having a conversation with, with Stat and being like, what do you think of the album? Because it was pretty obvious that the album was bad and that he didn't put any effort into it. I mean, if it was up to Stat, Zan would have been sitting in the studio recording every night and instead he was just doing drugs and having random ass girls come over every night. So, I mean. This would be part of his downfall as once his album was released, it was trashed by the entire industry with pretty much only one song carrying the album, his hit single Betrayal. Now this could have been due to him failing from his own success. He could have felt like he made it and now all he had to do was release music and his fans would still listen, but that wasn't the case. His music was getting worse, his hype was dying off and the money was slowing down. Yet, Lil Xan continued to spend outrageous amounts of money on materialistic items. He bought a Mercedes G-Wagon, starting at $140,000, three apartments in LA, and ridiculous amounts of designer clothes, which resulted in him eventually living a lifestyle above his means. But it would get worse. He would brag about Key in his G-Wagon, destroying his designer clothes, smashing his flat screen TV, and hosting a meetup with his fans, causing over $100,000 in damages. Now all of this combined made him come across as a bit of an arrogant brat, which can be further seen in an interview he did after the release of the Betrayal music video, where the interviewer asked him to review a Tupac song, which he said, the boring music. Now what he said isn't directly wrong, as it is his opinion and he can say what he wants, but it's the way he said it, and the fact it's coming from a drugged out SoundCloud rapper kid. His comments sparked a wave of controversy that annoyed several rappers and thousands of fans. It would escalate when he got into an argument with a man outside of a 7-Eleven gas station about his comments about the rapper Tupac. The man would then start following and recording Zan, which caused Zan to pull out his gun and start waving it around recklessly. He would continue to make the situation worse Worse, as he would also shout racial slurs at the man recording him. But things would eventually calm down and the two would leave each other alone. However, a short time later, the LAPD would start investigating Lil Xan for assault with a deadly weapon. Now this immature personality, mixed with the amount of drugs he was taking, I'm not surprised he acted like this. Imagine just being some random kid that's gone from uploading songs onto a SoundCloud, recorded in his bedroom, to become this rich superstar with millions of fans, all practically overnight. Now mix all the success with mental health issues and the heavy drug addiction, he was really messing himself up. And it seemed like he couldn't handle this life. From then on, he would lose hundreds of thousands of followers and his music streaming numbers 
nothing close to like the numbers he used to pull. He would add more fuel to the fire by trying to make himself seem like the victim. In an Instagram live in 2021, he blamed his manager for buying him drugs. And my manager was supplying me with the drugs. He knew all my plugs. So if I couldn't perform because I was withdrawing back then, because yes, I used to be a drug addict and he's going to act like uh, he didn't do that. And uh, I'm really feeling like I should take him to court, right? Because that, I, that was the time I almost died. Now you can look at this from two point of views. It's obviously very weird that his manager was buying him drugs, especially as a young kid that needed guidance, not someone giving him drugs. But then also from Lil Xan's point of view, he shouldn't be doing them in the first place and should take accountability for his own actions. So you're saying that you've been addicted to drugs since you were like, you know, 13, 14, whatever, like early in like junior high. And somehow the couple of weeks of your life in which you were on tour, you're saying that your manager helped you to get drugs. So you were able to get drugs every other week, every other year of your entire life before he was managing you and after he was managing you. But somehow those weeks that you were on tour, he was completely incapable of getting drugs and he needed to rely on his manager who doesn't even do drugs to get him drugs. Does this make sense to anybody? No. He would also call out the industry and his label that they don't care about him and just used him to pump out hit records. They just want to keep you alive long enough to make their fucking money. And if you die, even better for them. Because guess what? It's easier to manage a dead artist than an alive one. And that's what sucks about the Juice Word situation is because Juice was one of the most talented fucking people and now they have his whole catalog of music that did. And who knows if that's even what Juice's vision was. This was basically the last straw for Lil Xan and it further diminished any leftover dignity he had. And it seemed like he was trying to put the blame of his downfall onto others. Now, this superstar SoundCloud rapper, where is he in the modern day? Well, he seems to be doing better for himself. He bought himself a house, admitted himself to a psych ward, then headed for rehab and has currently been sober for over two years and seems to be an actual human now. He used to be this jaded, drug addicted SoundCloud rapper, whereas now it seems like he actually functions. He's still yet to drop an album since his debut project Xanarchy in 2018, however has dropped a handful of singles which are doing okay numbers. And in the end, it seemed like Lil Xan was another case of a teenager blown up overnight and being turned into prey by drugs and poor management. But at least he's doing good now. Yo, I'm sorry to interrupt the video, but we're very close to 10k subs, so if you guys could subscribe. I'll also comment and like, highly appreciated. Now let's get back to the video. In 2020, Pop Hunter would release his single Corvette Corvette and the remix with fellow Philadelphia native Lil Uzi Vert, which went insanely viral. It placed on the Billboard Hot 100 and became a TikTok phenomenon due to the dance created to the song. Now most of you will probably remember this song and the TikTok dance that became synonymous with it. But what happened to the artist behind the song? Pop Hunter. Because in the current day, he doesn't seem to be releasing a lot of music. And if he does, it struggles to get a couple hundred thousand streams. Ain't no kid supposed to go through no shit like that, bro. I seen some shit that a kid wasn't supposed to see. And then, bro, I gotta live with that. I don't even sleep, bro. Bro, I don't go to sleep at night, bro. I do not sleep, bro. Every time I close my eyes, bro, I see that shit happening over and over and over and over and over again, bro. Well, the controversy would start after the Corvette Corvette remix was released, as after this, Pop Punder and Uzi would tease that they have another song dropping soon called Takeoff. And it seemed like Pop Hunter had another viral hit ready and was about to become a rap superstar. However, things would turn very quickly. Lil Uzi Vert would remove all promotion for the song Takeoff, which had fans seriously confused. Now on the day the song was supposed to be released, somebody had leaked witness statements for a murder from Pop Hunter. Now the instant reaction from everyone on the internet was pretty disappointing, as everybody started bashing him for being a snitch. When I say fuck a rat, I mean, fuck all rats. I don't mean fuck one specific rat, goofy ass motherfuckers. I mean, fuck every last one of them. All them vermin, vermin delinquents. It ain't nobody force you to go tell, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like, but many people never read the full story. When Hunter was 14, he was stood on the street with his mum, where he would witness a scuffle, which was due to a man named Meat being upset that a kid named DJ was pulling a BB gun on people in the area. During this scuffle, 
DJ would try grabbing his BB gun, but was unable to due to Meat holding his arm. DJ would try to run away, which was when Meat grabbed his revolver from his pocket and shot DJ in the back of the head. Unfortunately on that night, 14 year old Duval Shields would lose his life and a couple months down the line, 19 year old Demetrius Brown would be sentenced to 40 years in prison. Now as Pop Hunter and his mother were there, they both made witness statements and Pop Hunter was even given a subpoena to testify in court, in which he told the court to forget about the statement he gave when he was 15, which in a way is him trying to undo his snitching, which I even remember seeing during the YNW Melly trial, where witnesses repeatedly told the judge that they forgot or can't remember certain scenarios, just so they don't look like snitches. I don't recall. I don't recall. But you don't recall? I don't. So you don't recall much from that night, do you? Now after these papers leaked, Pop Hunter would be first to respond by posting on his story with the caption, fake papers, trying to fool everyone into thinking this is just some hoax and somebody trying to ruin his career. However, a couple days later, somebody would leak a screenshot of Pop Hunter's close friend's Instagram story, which showed an exchange of messages with Lil Uzi Vert, which started with Uzi saying, Lil bro, you got to take me off your EP. I can't accept what you did. Which Pop Hunter replied, Come on big bro, everybody's starting to hate me because I was being loyal. I did what I had to do. I can't even get features no more. Which Lil Uzi Vert replied, Sorry Lil bro, I just can't respect what you did. With the caption of this story being, I'm about to quit rapping, all that paperwork just fucked up my whole reputation. Now of course, a lot of the casual fans saw this and genuinely thought it was real. However, Many people started debunking the post, with the account behind the news supposedly being notorious for faking stories within the Philly scene. And also, due to the fact Lil Uzi Vert doesn't type like that, another fake post would make the rounds on the internet. But this time, we are being a tweet from Uzi saying, Need my verse back, fuck that song, real street fellas stick to the code. But this was also debunked as being fake. Now at this point in time, the truth was, Pop Hunter's reputation was finished and he had nothing left going for him. But the question is, did he deserve this? He witnessed a 14 year old get murdered in front of him and simply told the police the truth. And as a 14 year old himself, I don't think he could have not told the detectives the truth, especially as his mother witnessed the shooting herself and Pop Hunter even said that the detectives threatened him that they will send him to jail. It's not like, you feel me, like I like I just came in to the room when they was asking me shit and I just started saying stuff. No, like, they was saying shit to me like, oh, if you don't tell us what happened, we're going to lock you and your mom up, bossy, bossy, bossy. Like, it was really saying this shit to a 14-year-old. And as a kid, you obviously don't know any better. To me, it seemed like he doesn't deserve to get blackboard. So you mean to tell me me and my mother witnessed a murder at 13 years old and my mother take me down there and say what she saw and say, baby, you say what you saw? And you niggas is telling this kid that he should have went against his mama? Is that what these niggas telling us, my nigga? That's how you know these niggas ain't been in the streets. And after all this went down, Pop Hunter's career was dead. He released a couple singles that barely broke a couple hundred thousand plays and even faked a stunt at a festival where someone ran on stage and stole the mic. He would also post some concerning stories on his Instagram where he pleaded for Ali to come take him as he has no purpose. He would go live on Instagram with a belt around his neck, be accused of domestic violence by his ex-girlfriend, and from a recent TikTok, it seems like Hunter is in jail. Overall, it seemed like he was screwed over for a whole lot of nothing. Hunter could have really became a star, but was screwed over by stupid and outdated street culture. In 2015, the music industry was ruled by one song, Watch Me Whip Nay Nay by Silento. Ricky Hawk, better known to the world as Silento, became one of the biggest trendsetters and was basically on top of not just the music industry, but the entire world, with his hit song being top three on the Billboard Hot 100 for six weeks straight. His song and dance would be plastered all over social media and TV which inspired this era of viral R&B dance songs that paired catchy songs with a signature dance, with hits like Hit The Quan and Rolex, all attempting to follow Silento's formula for success. However, none of these songs could even reach a fraction of Watch Me Whip Nay Nay's success. The high schooler put a positive spin to the instant fame he experienced, saying that he was an example of what happens when you put in the hard work and believe in yourself. And even with all the fame, 
Silent Hill wouldn't drop out of high school and would eventually graduate. To see this train of thinking on this young kid who immediately impacted the industry makes his downfall from stardom all the more upsetting. But just a couple weeks after the song came out, the unfortunate truth about Silent Hill started to set in. Yeah, he made a viral hit, but as we know, the quicker you get to the top, the quicker you fall. Silent Hill had hit fame, but his fame was quickly fading as people got bored and found the next viral dance move and moved on. He was unable to get another song to hit mainstream appeal quite like Watch Me Whip Nene, which led to him being labelled as a one-hit wonder. Most people don't know this, but Silent Hill's first song after Watch Me Whip Nene was actually Watch Me Whip Part 2 in what was essentially a sequel to the viral hit. And if this is your first time hearing about it, then you wouldn't be alone, as the song failed to hit wide-scale success. Silent Hill then went on to release his first real standalone project since Watch Me Whip Nene, three years later, called Fresh Out of High School, in which the songs barely broke a couple thousand streams and did not place on any charts, which again, Silent Hill was branded as a one-hit wonder and was unable to capitalise on his original viral hit. And believe it or not, this is essentially the entirety of Silent Hill's music career. Silent Hill not only failed to ride the success of his viral hit, but he essentially didn't even attempt to have a career outside of Watch Me Whip Nene. It's one thing to be a one-hit wonder, since there are countless one-hit wonders who ended up carving moderately successful careers and were able to live comfortable lives living better than 90% of people out there. But then there's Silent Hill, who not only didn't have a career, but let the fame and success of his viral song get to his head. Silent Hill started to go down a long list of legal battles and issues, ranging from business disputes to straight up cold-blooded murder. It would all start in 2017, when Silent Hill was a no-show for two events he was booked to perform in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. The event's organiser, Abdel Halim, was understandably not happy and wanted his money back. Silento ended up having to get his passport revoked and basically got banned from traveling until he paid off the $81,000 he owed the organizer in performance fees, travel fees, and advertising costs. But one of Silento's managers would come out and state that the organizer failed to pay Silento. In an attempt to free himself, he would post on Twitter a link to his fundraiser called Free Silento so he could travel out of the UAE and get back to the United States. He was lucky not to get arrested, as he was 19, and that's technically classed as underage over there, so they went about the situation differently. Luckily, Silent Hill was able to flee the UAE without any consequences and get back to the US, but this would have been the case for many of his other actions. In 2020, he first got arrested in the August of that year in Santa Ana for domestic violence, after which he got charged with a felony and was lucky to get out of jail by paying his $100,000 bond. And literally the following day, Silento got into another arrest as he apparently broke into a random house with a hatchet and attempted to attack the people within the house. He was supposedly looking for his girlfriend who apparently leaked inappropriate pictures of him on the internet. Luckily, they were able to disarm him before he could cause any damage. This could have ended up really bad, Salento was literally in a house with kids and the homeowner was ready to protect his kids with a gun. So if things escalated, who knows who could have gotten hurt or worse. Again, however, Salento missed out on jail time by posting a bail at $105,000. Now you would think that after two separate incidents of him almost going to jail for some serious crime, Salento would lay low and try not to do something illegal. But apparently, he just didn't get the memo. Two months later, Salento was pulled over for driving 143 miles per hour in his BMW. His defense for this one, he had to drive at his insane speed so fans wouldn't catch up to him after leaving the club. But that wasn't his only excuse, as he also told the cops that he wasn't a regular person and that if you looked him up on the computer, you would know that. Again, somehow, despite all these charges, this man is once again able to get out on bond. Even then, we are yet to talk about Silento's biggest crime yet. On the 21st of January in 2021, Silento was arrested in DeKalb County for shooting and murdering his cousin. When police arrived on the scene, Silento's cousin was shot once in the leg and once in the head and was pronounced dead at the scene. And a couple of days later, after investigating the scene, the police would come to the conclusion that Silento was the suspect. He was charged with malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, 
and possession of a firearm while committing a felony. This time, however, he was denied bond because it was seemed a flight risk. His family would come out with a statement that he was suffering with a bipolar episode during this incident. But these charges Silento got served opened up more about Silento's mental state at the time, which I can say was not good. Throughout his whole life, Silento reportedly battled with depression and anxiety. He claimed to have been misdiagnosed with ADHD and was fed medication that he didn't need. He also stated that his entire family suffered with mental health issues and grew up watching family members talk into walls and trying to kill each other, which left him depressed throughout his entire upbringing. But these health issues go back to the day his parents gave birth to him, as he was supposedly born with weed, cocaine, heroin and pills in his system. After this latest arrest, Silento's publicist, Chanel Hudson, released a statement which read, Please send my client Silento some positive vibrations. Over the past several years, Ricky has been suffering immensely from a series of mental health issues. We will continue in his efforts of treatment, but we ask in the meantime, the public uplift him and his family in immediate prayer and positive energy. Ricky is a beautiful soul, and we hope that the same people who came up whipping a name name with him continue to support him and lift it in prayer. Now you may be thinking, that as soon as the reign of Watch Me Whip Nene was over, Silento had also gone irrelevant and broke. But actually, despite not releasing new projects, Silento was still travelling around the country and the globe, performing, making appearances everywhere. He might not be a big rap star anymore, but the kids and the public still love him. It was actually during the pandemic which took a big hit on him, when absolutely no one was travelling, which caused Silento to hit rock bottom in his mental health, allegedly even attempting to commit suicide. On the 3rd of August in 2021, Salento was indicted on his charges, deemed a danger not only to society, but also himself. And even his family stated that they would prefer to have him in prison as they didn't think he was safe. He's still awaiting trial, so we are yet to hear a full on guilty or not guilty verdict. It's insane to think about how 10 years ago, Salento was the face of the music industry, the internet, and was the creator of one of the most viral dance anthems. It's a shame he could never capitalise on his success and build on it, but he still lived a great life, well, until he got, you know, arrested for murder. And of course, as all the other rappers in this video, I go over where they are at today, but I've pretty much summed it up in the end there. He's in jail, waiting to be trialled, and is suffering with heavy mental health issues.